the first man, Genesis 2-7, New Living Translations. Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground, and he breathed, in, he breathed <clears throat> the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. Who was the man? So in that, you think about that. He, he, he took dust and formed a man. So I guess there had to be a little bit of water. In, it's kind of, be, right, something. Spit, water. So he, but he formed this, he formed this man and breathed into his nostrils. So I'm thinking, I think about that. There's this dirt or this clay or this little statue looking thing or whatever it might be. And it's, and he, he, God breathes into the nostrils of this thing, the breath of life. And dirt became skin and dirt became eyeballs and dirt became ears and tongues and organs and blood and, and, and lungs and, and the, uh, think about that. How amazing is God that he could, that he did that. And it looked something like us. Probably had hair, Chico. (laughs) Who has really cool hair in here? Jacob's got pretty cool hair. Robert's got cool hair. Huh? Right. Something like that. Might have had a mustache like Tishon. Maybe. (laughs) Maybe. Maybe not. But then what, then, and when he became alive, then what also, what, what else did he, and so we know that, we talked about it a little bit, and then we're going to get going, because I just want you to think about this, and, and not, we know that the life of the flesh is in the blood, so also he had to breathe blood, so blood came in, it was, the, where did the blood come from? From God, it was sinless, it was innocent, it was perfect, it was, it was God's blood, Huh? And, and then what else? He, and he says in Genesis, he says, make man in our image after our likeness. So what else could the man do? He could think, he could talk, he could reason, he could make decisions, he could make choices. He, could, he had an open line of communication to God, spirit to spirit, right? The, the, the way that he interpreted life was from God's perspective, right? Because it says what? He was, he, let, let, let us create man in our image, and God was good, and he was like God. He was the, the, uh, the first son of God. How about that? The first man. I think you could use your imagination. Just, is that, that's pretty amazing, is it not? And then every man after, every man and every woman after him was created from the same seed. We came from Adam's loins. We're all kin to Adam. We're all kin to Adam. And then at, through another deal, we're all, we're all kin to Noah. Right? We're all, we come through that. Okay. And so Genesis 2.15. God, pla- I, I wrote this. God placed the man he had made in the place he had created just for him. Okay. Then the Lord God planted the man in the garden of Eden, no wait, am I there? I wrote, the Lord God planted the man in the garden of Eden, I didn't write it on my card, to tend and watch over it. Next verse, we're gonna go through 17, but the Lord God warned him, you may freely eat the fruit of every tree in the garden, except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. Sure to die. And I think in the, some of the translation says, in, in eating it, in dying, you shall die. Right? So with the implication that when you die, the death that I say you're going to die, eventually it's going to lead to your physical death. Right? In dying spiritually, in dying spiritually, you will eventually die physically and I don't know uh, how long did it take people to die back in those days 900 years 
So to me, it sounds like God created them to live if they would have not sinned. Adam and Eve would still be here today. You are sure to die. And then Genesis 3, 1, and I wrote this, the tempter came. The tempter came. I think it's, it's what it says in, let me look real quick. Matthew, you don't have to turn there, but I want to read this to you just to make sure I got my, I looked it up before the service. Matthew 4. Matthew 4. 4 1. Stay where you are. I'll just read to you. New King James says, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights after we was hungry, now when the tempter came, the tempter. So the tempter is who? Was then, is now. We're going to read all the way down through 7, I think, Miss Karen. The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. One day he asked the woman, did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Of course we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, the woman replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. You won't die. The serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it and you will be like God knowing both good and evil. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful, its fruit looked delicious and she wanted the wisdom it would give her so she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it too. At that moment... Their eyes were opened and suddenly they felt shame at their nakedness so they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. Okay, so what happened right there? They died. They died. They didn't drop dead physically. They were disconnected from the life of God. They were already like God and now they had their eyes open to know good and evil now, when it says that, that would we be like God, see, God, it says that God, is God evil? Does he, does he doesn't even tempt any man with evil, it says in James. He knew of evil, he knew the effects of evil, but he was not evil. And so anyway, so if we look at that, we're not gonna look at this for, go back over this too much, but how many of you know that the enemy still works like this? Did God really say? Like when it comes to forgiving. Oh, you, do you really have to forgive them after what they did to you? Or whatever it might be. You know? Whatever it might be. It's still that, oh God, you want that. Oh no, that's not gonna really happen. Right? So anyway, we're on to the enemy around here, are we not? I was, had a conversation with Sean today and great conversation. We talked for a while and, and, uh, it's, it's for a different time, but how many of you know God is faithful to, to, how many of you know that when you, when you get off track and, and lose your way, or, or, or not lose your way, but just kind of, you know, take this, the bait of, the, of, of Satan and, and, and don't walk in love and that God can show you what happened and when it happened? And so the Lord showed me right when it was and what, where, what, where it was and what it was and so that's for another day but it was pretty simple and I'm gonna share it with you but today's not the day but isn't God faithful? He's faithful. He's faithful. I said this years ago that, that or the Lord said this to me. He says, you know, because sometimes, you know, we're, we can feel, we can feel like we're in a situation and in a bad situation and, and God's trying to teach us something in it. You know, and, and that can kind of get twisted a little bit to where it's not quite how the way that, that we see it around here. But the Lord said, yeah, I'm trying to teach you something, all right. Right? 
how you got into it, how to get out of it, and how to make sure it never happens again. So anyway, uh, Romans 5.12. I'm so thankful that he showed me where I got off track. And I'm so thankful, too, that in his patience... He let me see it and feel it for where that it made an impact on me. Does that make sense? Sometimes we can just wipe sin away and oh well, you know, God understands and God forgives, but sometimes we need to feel the to feel the effects of it. I for me personally, I do. I could have said, Oh, you know what, that's no big deal, but it was a big deal. It was a big deal to God and it was a big deal to my daughter and it was a big deal to my wife. It was a big deal to us and and it was a big deal to me as a spiritual head of my home. And so, God is good. Romans 5, 12, New Living. When Adam sinned, sin entered the world. Adam's sin brought death, so death spread to everyone for everyone sinned. How about that? When Adam sinned, sin did what? Entered the world. Adam's sin brought death. So death spread to everyone. For everyone sinned. Romans 3.23. Romans 3.23. For everyone has sinned. We all fall short. Of God's glorious standard. What is God's glorious standard? You know what it is? I believe it's a person. And I believe that person's name is Jesus. He is God's standard of righteousness. So if we decide that we want to try to meet God's standard of righteousness and match Jesus word for word, thought for thought, action for action, go for it. You, you, you're welcome to try. And if, right, right, I said this, if you're ever going to measure yourself up against someone, be sure to measure yourself up against Jesus because you're going to fall short, right? Right, and the, 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 the thing that we can fall, the trap that we can fall into is we can always measure ourselves up against somebody that we think we're doing better than they are. And then you're setting yourself up and that is becoming self-righteous part of the reason that I had my stumbling stumble that I had become a little self-righteous in some areas right and that's another word for that would probably be pride and pride what comes before a fall pride thinking someone should be doing a little bit better than they're doing <laughs> yeehaw Romans 6.23 But the good news is, if we realize that we don't measure up to his standard, God's standard of righteousness, there's a gift waiting for us. For the wages of sin is death. Now, so is it, we still, even though our sins have been paid, there there is still, the wages of sin is still death. Did y'all know that? The wages of sin is still death. Separation from the love of God, separation from the life of God, separation from the love of another person, separation. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. All right. John 1. John 1, 12 and 13. But to all who believed him and accepted him, He gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not not with a physical birth, born from human passion or plan. Y'all see the two differences there? It could be a result of human passion or it could be a result of a human plan. But a birth that comes from God. But a birth that comes from God. John 6, 63. The spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. 
The very words I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life, right? Can you work or earn eternal life? It says the spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort outside of Jesus, outside of the spirit accomplishes nothing. But he goes on to say in the very words I have spoken to you, they are spirit and they are life. So to get to this point, the last three verses talked about sin entering the world and all have sinned. To, to, to receive the gift that he has for us, we just all have to come to the understanding that we've sinned. That we've sinned and that we need a savior, that we couldn't pay the price. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. This is talking to people that have accepted him, who believed in him, accepted him, that were reborn. God saved you by his grace when you believed. Right? By his grace. By grace through, what would the King James or New King James say right there? By grace through faith. God saved you by his grace when you believed that what he did, he did for you, right? It's not by grace alone, but by faith. And it's not by faith alone, but by grace. Grace is God's gift, God's power through your believing, through your faith. It takes both, right? It takes both. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. What is it? King James says, you can't boast about it. You can't brag about, you know, what a good Christian you are or what a good person you are, right? Yeah, right? It's, you're, either you're a Christian or you're not. You're either born again or you're not. I always say that, and I, I think Ms. Brother Michael Medrano sent me a text, and it was, I was like, it was something along these lines, and he said, in the words of Pastor Jackie, don't toot your own horn. I don't remember saying that, but I'm sure I did because he, right, if someone, if someone else, if you are a good Christian, that's someone else's job to say about you, not for you to say about yourself, right? Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. Now, it could be for the smart thing we have done and accepting the gift, the wisdom, Right? So none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. I think I read that on the back of Nina's shirt today. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. Right? Recreated us. So why? Why, why did he do that? Not only for that he could, we could spend eternity with him, but so that we could do, so that we could do. So we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Right? We don't get to heaven by doing good works. Or no, I shouldn't say that. We're not saved by doing good works. But when we're saved, we can do good works. Right? Philippians 2, 12 and 13. Dear friends, you have always followed my instructions when I was with you. And now that I am away, it is even more important. Now, I want you to think about this. We got to think, make sure that we understand this, what this is saying because it says it a little bit different. Work hard to show the results of your salvation. And then, does that mean that we have some cooperation to do with the Holy Spirit, some cooperation to do with the Word? It says work. The New King James says what? Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, right? So God does something on the inside and we work what's done on the inside out outwardly for everyone to see. Work out your own salvation, right? And, and, and what happens if I get off track, I get focused on wondering why someone else isn't working out their salvation. 
He says, he tells me to be focused on me. I don't know about you, but I have a full-time job with me. How about you? Do, y'all, do you have your hands full with you? <laughs> Thank God for the Holy Spirit, right? So what happens is, is when, we, when we lose focus on us and it, it's about, right? And, I, and I, the only way I know how to say it is, is if I'm going to be hard on someone, I need to be hard on myself. If I'm going to judge someone, I need to judge myself, right? And when we, mess, when, we, when we get off track is when we begin to be hard on someone else, harder on someone else than we are on ourselves, or we begin to judge someone else when the Bible says, if you're going to judge anybody, look inwardly and judge you. I like someone said this, I didn't come up with it, but God's called us to be a witness, not a judge. To be a witness, right? The next verse says, for God is working in you. Whoo, aren't you glad? Well, it says there, work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God. But then the next work says, for God is working in you. Giving you what? The desire and the power to do what pleases him. Right? Isn't that, and I know I've said this before, but I don't, I wouldn't say that God is sneaky because he's not sneaky. He's just wise. Huh? When, when we're seeking him, when we're going after him with all of our hearts, he can kind of work us a little bit, but that's okay because he, he need, doesn't, how many of you know that you need God to work? <laughs> and by that I mean, I think God is so awesome because he can make something seem like it's your idea, but it was his all along. How many of y'all have ever tried doing that with people? It works. I mean, and not trying to manipulate them or just like, you know, hey, man, why don't we, we, we might ought to do, what do you think about this? Or plant a little, all you're doing is just planting a little seed. Pastor Phyllis has done that with me in a, not, in a good way. And then later, you know what you think we ought to do? <laughs> just that very thing that we, you know. And I, I think sometimes when someone plants that little seed, you may not even remember that they planted it, but they planted it. And you're like, yeah, that's a good idea. I think we should do that. Let's go for it. And if you have a lot of conversations in the day, I know Chico has a lot of conversations in the day. And sometimes, you know, you could probably say something he might forget, right? Or I could, all of us could be in that boat. But isn't it pretty cool when, when you plant a little seed and then someone grabs a hold of it and it, they think it's their idea and it's a good idea and you kind of plant the seed. How many know God does that to us on a regular basis? Does he? Does he I want him to do that to me. I give him permission to do that with me, amen? Huh? Please do that to me. If I, I always say it all the time, you know, like if, if my sermon was good, it was God. If it was bad, it was me. <laughs> so to the spirit, you'll reap life everlasting. So to the flesh, and you'll reap corruption. So we want to sow to the spirit. Ezekiel 36, 25 through 27. We're about done, Tishon. I did better than you thought I could do. <laughs> he said, you're not done yet. <laughs> I love Sean. He's a good brother. And I'm saying he's a good brother. He's not saying he's a good brother. I'm saying he's a good brother. Got a lot of good brothers and sisters in here. Then I will, uh, 3625, Ezekiel 3625. I think we talked about this last Wednesday. God prophesying the new birth in Ezekiel 36. Then I will, God speaking here, then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. Woo-hoo. Huh? He's talking about when you've come to the place where you, ask, you say, Jesus, I need you. Your filth will be washed away and you will no longer worship idols. What is an idol? Just anything that's, that takes the place that gets, this comes before God in your life. I don't know about any of you, but before, when I got, came to the Lord, I had a long list of idols. Some people called them addictions. I called them idols. They're idols. They were, took my place, you know. And you will no longer worship idols. Aren't you glad he did that for you? Amen. Amen. Next verse. And I will give you, I will, God says, I will give you a new heart. Yes. 
and I will put. Now, this is God doing. This is God's doing. This is what God said he's going to do. We have a part. God has a part. This is what God promised he would do for you. I will put my a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart. Thank you, Jesus. And give you a what? A tender, responsive heart. A heart of flesh. A soft heart. A teachable heart. A pliable heart. Right? Next verse. And to put the icing on the cake. And I will put my spirit in you. Right? And not only that, but how many of you know that he's a faith God? He already starts saying good things about you before it even happened. He said good things about you 2,000 years before this happened. So that you will follow. He has faith in us. He believes that you will follow my decrees. And you will be careful to obey my regulations. That's what God says about us. That's what God says about you. That's what God says about me. You know, he only says good things about us. Do you know that? We should only say good things about ourselves. We should only say good things about one another. Right? That was a, that was, the failure to do that was a part of my departure. Mm hmm. But I'm back. And I'm not, I'm not going down that path again, Mama Pastor Phyllis. Colossians 2.11. And Lenny, I'm not apologizing to Margaret. You know why, right? But since I'm a new pastor, since you got a new pastor, you haven't heard that. I see, since y'all got a new pastor, I can tell my, old, my same old stories over and over again. Colossians 2.11. When you came to Christ, you were circumcised, but not by a physical procedure. Christ performed a spiritual circumcision, the cutting away of your sinful nature. Huh? Think about that. So, from God's perspective, you're no longer a sinner. You're not an old sinner saved by grace. You're now a sanctified saint. Oh, sinners sin. We don't, we're not expecting to sin. You were a sinner, but now you are a saint. Sanctified, set apart, a born again, child of God through faith in Jesus Christ, right? The cutting away of your sinful nature. That kind of sounds a little bit like taking the old stubborn, stony, stubborn, hard heart out, right? The cutting away of your sinful nature. Next verse. For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized, and with him you were raised to, to new life. How about that? I'm starting to feel like Tigger. <laughs> because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized. So the Lord wanted me to write, remind us that if you haven't been baptized, you need to get baptized. Those who believe and are baptized will be saved. And with him, you were raised to new life. Say new life. A new life. Because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. Verse 13. You are dead because of your sins. Whose sins? All of sins. So you didn't die because of Adam's sin. You died because of your sins. What do you think? What do you think? Y'all, do you think that you are that, that God would God be just to send us to a bad place because of Adam's sin? No. Sin entered the world and said sin spread to all because all sinned. You were dead because of your sins. I was dead because of my sins, and because of my sinful nature was not yet cut away. So what happened when Adam sinned? He went from having the nature of God to the fallen nature of the enemy. Right? We talked about it last Wednesday that it's not your sins. It is your sins to some degree that keeps you out of heaven, but it's your nature, a, a, a separated, fallen nature that's not been reconnected to God, to God cannot be in the presence of God. You've got to have your heart changed. You've got to have your nature changed back to the way it's supposed to be. 
or how God originally wanted it to be. And I believe that I, I, it's not a big deal. It's not a deal breaker either way, but I believe that we're all born spiritually alive as babies and we sometime in there we reach the accountability and we, we, we willfully sin and we die. And from that point forward, whether it's three or 11, you have now reached the age of accountability and you need to get saved, right? That's why uh, VBS is pretty important. Then God made you alive with Christ for he forgave all our sins. So one more Romans chapter 2, 28 and 29 and that's going to be the ending. But can you see that all of this was basically God's doing? You did your part by sinning. <laughs> Good job. Right? And then God in his goodness opened your eyes to let you see your sinful condition. It's the goodness of God that leads a man to repentance. Right? Aren't you glad that he opened your eyes to see your condition? Huh? And how many of you know that if we aren't judgmental towards people and we're not critical towards people and we love people and we love one another, it's going to be easier for people to understand that, huh? Yeah. Romans 2, 28 and 29. And he's talking to the, to the, I guess to the Jews at Rome or some. For you are not a true Jew just because you were born of Jewish parents or because you have gone through the ceremony of circumcision. Right? Now, I, I th- you know, I, I thought about that. What, what does that mean to us? And I'd be adding to, but you know, I always kind of thought that, you know, that could be something along the lines of, well, just because your parents were Christians and you might have been sprinkled or even baptized or whatever and you know didn't really repent you know if you got if you got baptized without getting saved you just got wet it's not the baptism that saved you I I remembered having a you know I mean anyway we won't get into all that got a few stories but part of my repentance is yeah through this, I'll, I'll have some good, I'll have some stories, but it's not going to be at someone else's expense. Except mine, I can tell stories about me. <laughs> I've got a lot, of, a lot of good stories on me. Because I was the worst. I was worse than Sean. I was worse than Jacob, worse than Chico. Uh, I was, I was the worst. I was the worst. Right, or, right, you see what I'm saying? So not, nothing outwardly you can do, just because you're born into a Christian family doesn't mean that you're a Christian. Just because you've been baptized or confirmed, whatever, doesn't mean you're, right? If you didn't go through any of the things that we just talked about, you're still not, right? And there could be other things that we add. Just because you go to church doesn't make you a Christian. If you haven't re- no, realized that you needed Jesus, and that it admitted that you're sinning and, and let God come in and do what only he can do on the inside of you, you're still, we're still lost. But we want people to know the truth. So there's a part, there's a second part to this message, but I don't know if I'm gonna get to preach it on Wednesday or not because my, uh, Hayes Reese is coming. He's coming soon. He might be coming that day. So it might have to be the next Wednesday. L- last verse, verse 29. No, he says, a true Jew... And this could also be Christian or believer or whatever word you want to use, child of God, is one whose heart is right with God. And true circumcision is not merely obeying the letter of the law, rather it is a change of heart produced by the Spirit. And you think about, how many of you have had that? Doesn't, when you just think about 
all of these verses that we've read tonight, and, and I know that God's done them for me, and I've done that, and it takes all, the, all, the, all of my works and all that out of the equation. It was simply God being God and doing what only he could do for me, and all I had to do was sin and say, I need you. That's it. A person with a changed heart seeks praise from God, not from people. I read a, a deal the other day that said, uh, I think it was my text, we're never really free until we're free from uh, the, to impress people. The need, something along those, the need to impress people. We're out to impress God and God's not gonna be too impressed by him. <laughs> we're out to please him. I mean, if someone could make somebody out of dirt and breathe, and they become pastor, one of us, out of dirt, that's pretty impressive. I don't think I could do anything quite to that level, but we can trust him, and we can love like he loves, and we can allow him to, to, to love others through us. I was, y'all probably heard the joke, and it was a, what was it? Someone challenged God to something to, to do. How does it, you probably, you've heard it, but it, it challenged God, okay, let's, uh, I can do whatever you can do, God. And, and he's like, I'll, I, and he, so he goes and he, and, and he goes to make the man and he goes to get the dirt. And he's like, no, no, make your own dirt. <laughs> that's just a terrible version of, the, that's the punchline. Oh, no, 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 make your own dirt. And he's like, ah. Right. So God loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. You've got a new pastor. We've got a new vision. We've got, we, you know what it you know, really is? It's about, it's about loving people. It's about loving people. It's about loving the people in your life. It's about slowing down to enjoy the relationships in your life, especially the one you have with him. And the only thing I can remember that really, that really stuck out with me is as someone who, claims, someone who claims to have a relationship with the Lord. I'm talking about myself right now. Someone who claims to have a relationship with God. I claim to have a relationship with God. I, I know, but I'm just saying. Uh... And I have my morning time, and I, I tell y'all, y'all need to have your morning time, right? But what if, if you don't come out of that morning time more lovely and lovable and loving, what are you doing in your morning time? Right? I'm like, hello? Right? Are we... Right? My kids, right? My employees, my horses. <laughs> that cat. <laughs> right? Am I right? We should come out of our morning time, our presence of God, loving and kind and tender-hearted and patient and compassionate, just like the one we got through spending time with or we're doing something wrong, right? But we're doing something right around here. We're trusting him, we're loving him. We, God's, we, how many of y'all can sense there's something really, really awesome going on? And it's not just here, it should, I'm, you, know, you know what hit me this, this week, and, and I'm gonna let you go. We have a vision here, and, and, and God has a, a plan and a purpose for, for this church. But he has a vision and a plan and a purpose for every church in Dilly. For every, I talked about that, but I mean, I really believe it. I really mean it. I, I, I'm just as excited. I want to get just as excited for them, for our other brothers and sisters as, as I am for us. I remembered something that Pastor Phyllis talked about years ago. Uh, and it was a, it was a, it was a legit, legitimate question. And, and I'll try to, I think I can tell it. And she goes, and she was having, she has her, had her morning time with the Lord and the Lord. Would, now, he, he asked her, if you could have a thousand, right, come to your church or five, tha or five, was it five thousand? What did they? I said, he just asked me, he, I was praying and praying for our church and, you know, I knew we had a vision, but he said, if you could pray, 
pray to me and have a thousand come to your church, or if you could pray to me and five thousand would go to other churches and then to yours, how would you pray? And you know, when you're calling, you know. <laughs> But you know what probably happens when you, when you can pray like that? You'll be like Solomon, right? Solomon asked for this, and because you asked that, I'm going to give you this and this and this too, right? Amen. On your feet, on your feet. So uh, on your feet, soldiers. Soldiers. But we're, we're soldiers that love. We're loving. We're loving soldiers. All right. So um, before you leave here tonight, I'm going to release you and let you go, and I'm going to also uh, give you an opportunity, or, or just give them a... Um, uh, if you leave, don't leave here tonight. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, come up, come visit with me before you leave or, or someone that's with you. It, it, don't leave here tonight without settling it. I remembered, uh, I had an awesome conversation with a good friend of mine and uh, we spent, we went, I, I went to, I went and picked him up and we went to watch the Ginobili retirement celebration and and on the way back, and, and he's been wanting to talk to me, we didn't want to talk to me, so he just flat out asked me, you know, about, after, you know, heaven. And, uh, and so we, we had a, a probably an hour-long conversation because he understood about God and he understood about the Ten Commandments and he prayed to him every day and, and he believed that, he said, well, obviously I believe that he's listening to me because I talk to him every day. I'm like, that's a good point, that's a good point. <laughs> If I didn't think he was listening to me, I wouldn't be talking. I'm like, that's a good point. But he said, I don't quite understand this Jesus and accepting Jesus and, and what that means. You know, I don't, I don't. He said, I went to a church that they didn't talk about Jesus. We just talked about God and being good and when he was a little boy and that God was a forgiving God. He said, my mom said God. I said, your mom, right. God's a forgiving God. And then so I said it every way I could possibly say it <laughs> for an hour. And we're back and forth. And so he finally's like, he's like, so I got to like say something? I've got to like with my mouth say something and say that you're my, that, that's all? He's like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. But I said, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I said, it's not hard. Uh, he's made it pretty simple for us. He's like, huh, yeah. He's like, I said, you want to do it? No, no. I said, I'm going to do it. But as soon as we get home, I'm going to go for a walk and I'm going to do it. And I'm going to take care of this and I'm going to settle this. And I'm like, woohoo, you know? How cool is that? And so that it, but it just hit me that we, you know, the, tonight's message was basic, but every, you know, everybody doesn't know it. Everybody hasn't heard it. And we've got to, we, what, what the Lord's put on our mind, we've got to say it so many different ways that everyone is eventually going to hear it in a way they understand. And that they're going to get it. Because really it's the main thing. Right? And we don't, but we don't ever want to make, uh, make it about just saying a prayer and that's it. Saying the prayer is just the beginning. That is just the beginning. And if we're not real careful, we can make just saying the prayer and accepting Jesus the end. But it's not the end, it's the beginning of a relationship, of something awesome, of an exciting life. Right? Thank you for being part of our service today. We pray that you had a blessed time Please take time to connect with us online at connect at christianfaithcenter.church and be sure to mention your prayer request. We would love to hear from you. You can also check out our website at www.christianfaithcenter.church for more information on any upcoming events. On Facebook, you can find us as Christian Faith Center Dilly, Texas. Hope you will join us next week for a great time in the Lord. God bless.